to another episode of the Made Alive podcast. We're so excited today to have one of uh, LifeGate's longest friends, I would say, Jim. Jim Bernard, yeah. we're excited to have you back as a voice in the LifeGate community. Uh, Let's Jim go. was the campus pastor of LifeGate for, gosh, how many years? Two years? Three years? Three years. Three years, right? When yeah. we kicked off in our Trade Creek days. Um, and we're we're really grateful for you. And, and then we've sent you out. You've been sent out into the city and you're still in Denver, but you're now a coach. You have a coaching uh, company. Is that what you call it? I don't know what you call ministry. it. Coaching ministry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coaching ministry called Tiller. And you've released a couple of books. The first being The Suffering Guy and the second being your new book, which feels rightly themed for this podcast, which is called yeah. Made Alive. And we're just excited to have you back uh, back in the LifeGate community for a conversation today, Jim. Yeah, LifeGate, let's go. What's up, everybody? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Can I just say really quickly, yeah. I had the rough end of LifeGate. Like uh, I was there when it was a mobile church setting up and down uh, at the high school. It was rough. Like that was hard work. Yeah, and you guys it have it so work. easy. Look at yeah. you. I know we do have it easy in my cushy little <laughs> office here. You know, you, you, you had to all share an office and did all the things. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're excited to have you back, Jim. Um, and Jim, you have a really interesting story. Um, you and your wife, Alicia, and Alicia has a chronic health condition. And so we're focusing right now on the May Live podcast around marriage and relationships. And um, you guys have a story that is one that's challenging and it's full of a lot of suffering and hard things. And so we're just excited to have a little bit of a conversation with you about that today. So to kick us off, do you want to just share a little bit about you, about Alicia, and about your marriage and, um, yeah, how y'all met and, and where you are all at right now? Yeah, that's great. So let's just jump in with marriage. That That's yeah. the topic we're here for. So <laughs> yes. I met my sweet wife, Alicia, actually at church. She was working at, at the church I was starting to attend in St. Louis. And um, she was up one day, the, the first Sunday I was there, she was up on stage giving announcements and she was really cute, you know, so I was like paying attention, like taking notes, like, <laughs> you know, ooh, what's happening this next week, you know? And so I came up with the bright idea of like trying to volunteer to serve, you know, so I, I go up and talk to her afterwards and my motives weren't pure. I'm going to own it right <laughs> now. I just wanted to get to know her. So, you know, I'm like, hey, yo, you know, I want to get connected. You know, I want to serve. And um, she's like, all right, bro, I, I see what's happening here. So, you know, I, I talk her into going out on an interview with me, you know, because oh, I'm pretty interview. good. She'd be lucky. Yeah, she'd be lucky to have, <laughs> have me on her team, you know. So we start dating right away and we date for a year and a half. And it was great. You know, I fell in love with her, her love for Jesus. She's this is an oxymoron, but she's stupid smart and she's mm -hmm. very strong willed. Like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had mustered up the courage to propose to her. It was the worst proposal of all time. There's no time for that story here, but, um, you know, she said yes, and that's on her. She chose this level of pathetic and, um, yeah, we had a really short engagement. Okay. We, we, uh, had, it was a 10 week engagement. 10 weeks. But yeah, oh, I it's didn't pretty realize fast, that. right? That's yeah. really quick. Yeah. 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 For the, for the record, she wasn't pregnant. There was no funny business. <laughs> it wasn't anything like that, but it was like a venue issue. And really at the end of the day, God mm. knew like he yeah. does what was coming. And, uh, three months into our married life, uh, Alicia got really sick. Like at first it was okay. She's got the stomach flu, no big deal. But after like a week or two, it's like, hold on, wait, like something's like really wrong here. And we yeah. started going to like the emergency room and seeing as many doctors as we could and just trying to figure it all out. Like it was pretty nuts. Um, yeah. You know, and I really think God, God was really gracious in this to like coordinate the short engagement, because if she would have gotten sick before we had gotten married, I, I had asked her a question. I hadn't committed myself. There was no covenant. Right. I could have left. And I'm actually really grateful for this order of operations. You know, uh, it, it wasn't easy, but, you know, in fact, like as she was like getting sick and, you know, quickly she was like being sent off to the Mayo Clinic, like months mm. four, five, and six of our married life, she was up in Minnesota doing all these like horrific tests and meeting all these doctors and trying to figure it out. And I was stuck in St. Louis. Like it was, it was awful. And I didn't know how to deal with any of this. Like the, it, it really was like 
mortifying for me. And I hated how I was feeling about it. And I was like kind of isolating and not being authentic, not really letting mm. other people into this pain. And yeah. uh, I, I was really thankful though, for my church community at the time, like the church really rallied around us and they, you know, the way I, I put it is, is they came around me and they held my arms up when I was weak and weary. And um, I wish I could like depict that even further, but I just remember yeah. thinking like, this is, this is really amazing what they're doing. And um felt like God at the time was like saying, man, I hope you're paying attention to this because this is, you know, the church being the church. And um I'm like, yeah, I don't really understand your point here, God, that <laughs> kind of feels like a riddle, but yeah, I guess I'll pay attention. And uh, over the next several years, Alicia just got sicker and sicker. I mean, just like falling with her weight and you know capacity right. and everything. She ended up getting so sick that she couldn't drive and then couldn't work yeah. any longer. And it was like, it was bananas. It was like just a lot of grief, a lot of suffering. Um, it, it, it was nuts. And kind of all the way through this, I felt like God was like poking at me that I should go into ministry. And I'm like, bro, mm. there's no way. There's just no way. Yeah. Like, look at the complicated life you've given me. I think ministry's complicated. There's just no way I'm going to do it. And I would give God the Heisman stiff arm. I'm just like, not about it. <laughs> and, um, you know, he just got really insistent, really loud. Mm. Frankly, he did a miracle in our lives um, to get my attention. Uh, maybe there was more intention than that. But, um, you know, Alicia's disease is a connective tissue disease called Ehlers-Danlos mm. Syndrome. Um, if you've ever seen a contortionist, someone that can bend their joints in any direction, they've got that same disease, but um, it's it's like a hyperflexibility in their joints. Yeah. Alicia's version is a hyperflexibility in her like abdomen and her midsection. Yeah. So there's no muscle tone pushing food through her digestive system. All of her core organs had prolapsed or fallen out of place. And she's got cow tissue and meshing and tacks trying to keep things where they're supposed to be. And um, you know, this miracle that God did in our lives. And I sometimes like, not sometimes I always hesitate telling this because I, I know perfectly healthy people that aren't given this gift. Mm. Like Alicia had no business like getting pregnant or being able to carry a pregnancy. Um, but God just did it. He like, when I say miracle, absolutely. Like she mm. got healthier during her pregnancy Yeah, and yeah. You know, we had wanted to be parents really badly and just, we had given up, you know? And then God did what only he can do. And I, 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 we had this little boy, he was born really premature, like over two yeah. months premature, three pounds, 14 ounces. He was tiny. I could hold him in my two hands. He had to spend 26 days in the NICU. And one of those days yeah. in the NICU, I'm like praying over him. I'm like, God, this makes no sense. Like, why would you give me this gift? Like, I've got friends you haven't given this to. Like, what? What? Thank you, of course, but like yeah. the only way this makes sense is that you must have a calling for for his life. Yeah. And I yeah. just want to commit myself that I would be a good earthly dad, that he would know you as Heavenly Father and yeah. be prepared for whatever it is you're calling him to. And I I just got met in that little hospital room by God saying, like, hey, like what what if in twenty or thirty years I call Anderson? Mm -hmm. into ministry and it doesn't matter if he's got a good excuse or bad yeah. excuse if he tells totally. me no like how how are you gonna feel as his earthly yeah. dad and yeah I just was like oh my gosh are you kidding me like you're you're coming with the guilt trip like <laughs> I would feel disappointed so yeah um, Jim, can I ask a question on that real fast how yeah. I mean obviously Alicia has all this health all these health things going on right she gets pregnant you all have Anderson precious mm -hmm. gift Yep. How are you navigating that? And also, like, I'm assuming that simultaneously, Alicia is probably still pretty, pretty not doing great. It's pretty ill and pretty sick. And so mm -hmm. how did you navigate that? Right? How did you navigate a season where it's like, we have this beautiful gift now, and also this like grief and the tension of, of mm -hmm. Alicia's illness? Yeah. I mean, I, I think step one for me was just learning to get authentic about it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I can feel all the things in the world, but if I'm not sharing it with the Lord and I'm not sharing it with the Lord's people, like, what am I doing? You know, yeah, um, yeah. I'm hiding and not living in reality. And I just think that's really important. So I, I think that was step one. Um, you know, and I think step two is just having the courage to, um, to trust God, you know, like yeah. he, he pretty quickly, like 
sent us to Colorado, which uh, I should have loved because I'm a big skier. Um, but he sent me out here to go to seminary and it was, it was awful. Like I hated it. We had no community out here mm. and whatnot. And just, it was hard to trust him. And isn't yeah. that true? It's like, sometimes yeah. like, like, man, you, you have good things for me. And I believe that, but I don't think I like the pathway to getting totally. to those good things. And <laughs> yes. And so there was some hard days, especially early on in Colorado. And mm. you know, fortunately I, I got some, some gigs at some churches, one of them, you know, that you love and care for <laughs> life gate shout out, yes. you know, yeah. and you know, God has done some amazing things and he's like built this desire in me to, um, to help people in their own expectation gaps. It's just a fancy phrase for suffering. Yeah. Like we all have hopes and expectations for, you know, career, for marriage, for life, but often reality comes in underneath it. And that gap in between is full of disappointment, dissatisfaction and distress. And, um, I just felt like I had built like this street cred with people because yeah. of this hard story. Like, yeah, I hate the story that, that is written in my life. You know, the mm -hmm. story that God has given me, I'll be honest, it sucks. It's mm -hmm. as far away from what I would have written for myself, but sure. I still have the opportunity and gift of sharing that story. And it's given me this weird street cred. And, you know, to this day, like I, you know, I, I realized like, okay, I, I need to use it and people yeah. come and see me. I don't know. Like I, I, four years ago left LifeGate, you know, as a, as a pastor and started this coaching ministry to just help people. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. Like that was four people, years ago. It's four years. Yeah. No it's a way. Long time. That does, yeah. That's not true. I don't buy that. Is that real? You've yeah, been absolutely. doing Tiller for four years. Oh, wow. I, I left January of 2020. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That, it feels like just yesterday, honestly, Jim. It oh, doesn't I know. feel like it was that long ago. I know. I'm well aware <laughs> of it. It's nuts. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, time flies when you're having fun, right? So, right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So I just, I give away my time to, mm. to people. I don't charge yeah. anyone and it's, you know, think counseling, but I'm not a counselor. I'm a pastor and sure. I'm trying to use this expectation gap thing um, to like leverage discipleship. Like if you're right. stuck in the gap, that's the time to trust Jesus more. Yeah. And I, yeah. I just get to walk with people in that and it's a blessing. I, I love it. Yeah. Jim, I've heard you obviously talk about the expectation gap a handful of times. Um, because fun fact for anyone who's listening to this podcast, Jim was actually in my wedding. He was a groomsman in my wedding. Um, really good friends with my husband. Um, yeah. and, yeah. um, I obviously have heard you talk about this a bit, but I, as I, as I'm like sitting here listening to you, what do you feel like was your biggest expectation gap, right? Um, as, as you considered your marriage, like what has that been for you? Well, I mean, the obvious one is just Alicia's sure. health. Like I expected yeah. her to be healthy. Like, yeah. you know, she, she went to law school. She's an A-type personality. She's <laughs> right. in it to win it. You know, like I, yeah. I totally expected that we would both have, like be dual income. We'd both be making loads of money. We'd yeah. like be highly successful, you know, like, you know, this is, we, we can be a little PG 13. We just like have like this, like illustrious love life, you yeah, know, like totally. yeah. all of this stuff, it's just going to be amazing. And, um, none of that stuff is how it's actually played out. And like, yeah. it's easy to be like, that's not fair. Like, <laughs> like I, I deserve this. I like, you know, I don't know. There's, yeah, there's just so yeah. much selfish selfishness that you can put on yourself. And I'm like, you know what? It's, it's actually, yeah, my life is about me on some level, but it's not about me. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's about building God's kingdom here. And, you know, like, despite all this disappointment, I have that opportunity and, you know, like, I don't know. Like I, I love, like, I don't know why Alicia's still around. Like it's been 17 years. Mm. Like I think literally every doctor, um, everyone in the family, every friend would be like, yeah, there's no way she can survive this. It's been horrific. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's been devastating, but she's still as strong as ever. Mm. And, um, I think there's just a lot to be grateful for, you know, like totally, totally. There, there's going to be a day where I'll, I'll, I will lose my wife. And that's going to hurt like junk. It's going to be the the worst, but there's still going to be things to be grateful for. And um, yeah. God's been really gracious in it. And sure. Um, 
Yeah. That probably yeah. didn't answer your question. No, but. it did. It was great. I think that was a great answer to that. Um, obviously. Okay. So we just, you, sorry, we kind of got off your story a little bit. So you, you all had Anderson, right? You moved to Colorado. Mm -hmm. Um, and so where, like, what has been your experience in Colorado? Like how is Alicia doing now? And how is that, how was, how did that move impact your marriage? I guess, um, as you guys were navigating health and seminary and jobs and new baby and all of that. Yeah. I mean, just the loneliness of Colorado, I think united us even more. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we had to be united and, um, you know, I think the best marriages, um, have unity and, um, you know, we're, we're broken people, so we're not perfectly united, yeah, but, right. um, you know, there, there's, there's, we always, we all have our moments. Right. But mm -hmm. I mean, it, it made us have to like really rely on each other and, yeah. you know, there, we had to start over with all our doctors and, figuring it all out, you know, build it all back up. Like we had great doctors in St. Louis. It, it really was stupid for us to move. It, it made no sense, but we were just trying to do the things that God, you know, seemed to be telling us. So, um, so I think unity was like at, at the core of it, the, um, just the determination that we had to, to like not fail. Like, mm -hmm. okay. So my early days in seminary, I was managing a Starbucks. Like it was like, um, not my dream job, but it was fine. It was, it, it paid the bills. Paid the bills. But, yeah. <laughs> but I like, you know, I was going to seminary, getting my master's degree part-time. I was working full-time, like really full-time plus. I swear every day at work, I would get punked into staying three or four hours extra just because someone didn't show up or something would happen. That just crazy. Uh, I mean, I, I had a sick wife at home who yeah. was a 24 hour fall risk and couldn't drive a nine month old baby who couldn't right. do a dang thing for himself and needed his dad, but like his dad's nowhere to be found. And that juggling act that I was trying to pull off was so hard and so heavy. And, um, I would just lose myself. Like I would have a mm -hmm. mental breakdown every three weeks. I'd be like, I don't know if God's a jerk. I don't know if I misheard him. I don't care. Like we're not doing this anymore. We're, we're going back home to St. Louis. Like we're going to like play it safe or whatever. And, you know, I think, What's beautiful about marriage is, and I, I don't know if you found this in yours. I, I know a, a lot about your marriage, but like, <laughs> but like Alicia and I have hardly ever been in like the bad spot at the same mm. time. Right. It's mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes it's me, you know, like freaking out, losing my mind. And she's like, I'm, I'm okay right now. And then other times it's her and I, I'm okay. And yeah. we get to support each other. And I, you know, this was a great example of Alicia supporting me like, bro, like God is not fickle. Like mm. he called us to this. He must have something in it for us. We've got to see this through. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, but like we, we can't give up. We just can't. And I'd be like, all right, you're right. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then three weeks later, I'd be right back in the same spot. But like, I think that, you know, we have complimented each other really well. Um, yeah. And I think the times we haven't complimented each other well has just been out of our own stubbornness, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to hear that or whatever, you know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think marriage is, it's, is its own ball game, right. In the sense of that we all have our, we all have our issues and we all have our, our mis mishaps and mix ups. Right. And I think every marriage mm -hmm. has its own struggles, but I mean, you all have a pretty unique um, circumstance within which you've been operating, but it's not, it's not so unique that nobody else can relate to it. So I yeah. guess, I, Jim, I just, I think that in, in reality, I mean, there's some crazy statistics out there that I'll talk about, right? Like people getting ill, people having cancer, people, you know, get like having a disability, like coming into a disability later in life. Um, and that's just the reality of living in our broken, sinful world. Um, mm -hmm. and so what encouragement would you give to couples who, who maybe weren't expecting this, or maybe are entering into it, not three months into marriage, but seven years, 10 years, 20 years, mm -hmm. 30 years into marriage, 50, right? What encouragement would you give them as they're walking through this season of, dis of discerning? Like, what do we do with this now? Yeah. Well, I think that's a great question. And to your point about statistics, like it's just not in our favor, you know, that, right. Divorce rate in America is about 50%. And sadly, the divorce rate with Christians is about 50%. Um, 
you know, it, there, there's maybe stats that, that say like, oh, if you're, if you're a, a couple that prays together and is actually very active in your faith, the, the, the rate is really low as opposed to just, I'm Christian, yeah, quote unquote, yeah. you know, but like if a partner gets sick, that, um, that, that divorce rate goes up quite a bit because like that expectation gap is real and it's heavy and it's hard. And, um, and, you know, so the statistics of like, if, if it's the husband that gets sick versus the wife, it's pretty staggering. It's mm. um, a, a couple is seven times more likely to get divorced if the wife is the one that gets sick because guys are just that terrible at caregiving. And I mean, the, I, I yeah. don't know if that's exactly it, but like, sure. it's just a hard dynamic. Like yeah. you are well north of 75% of divorces or of marriages dissolving because mm. of illness in the relationship. And I just think like, man, I, I want to lead better than that. You know, like, yeah. um, I, I made a commitment. I made a covenant and certainly it's been hard, um, to follow through, but, um, uh, this is a, a quick non sequitur. So forgive me. This is probably not no, where go. you wanted to go, but <laughs> no, you can I, go. When, when I made my commitment, my covenant to Alicia, I promised to be with her through good or bad um, mm. for rich or for poor or for health or for sickness. And um, that is expectation gap language. I basically said, and I didn't know this back then, you know, 17 years ago, I didn't know I was promising, Hey, I, it doesn't matter how big the gap is. I'm, I'm in it. I'm, I am not mm. going to leave. I'm going to stay faithful and committed. And this covenant is real. And yeah. um, those that, that language being in the vows is something I've hung on to really tightly, you know, like there's been days where yeah. I'm like, do I want to do this? I'm not sure I want to do this. I don't like it. But, you know, I've been able to hang on to that vow and say, well, you know, it's not just about enduring in it. It's about like finding hope in it. And, you mm. know, sometimes it's really hard, but it is the best thing to do when you can do it. And um, if Alicia was here with me, she would unequivocally say, hey, this dude's been a knucklehead, <laughs> but he actually meant what he said on that day in September of 2006, that, you know, like he, he has been with me in this and, I think it's like the most beautiful thing. There's a theology of suffering that exists that, you know, if I just experienced all that stuff at the top, the stuff, the the good, the the rich and the health, um, I mean, that's great. That's what I hope for. But at no point do I actually prove my covenant if that's all we experience. Mm -hmm. It's that stuff at the bottom. It's It's the bad. It's the poor. It's the sickness where we actually get to prove our covenant. And, you know, like we've had copious amounts of that stuff. I've gotten to prove my covenant to Alicia. And I think that's, you know, why suffering exists in our world. You know, if yeah. God's so good, why does he allow suffering? Well, I think it's to prove our side of the covenant. You know, hmm. like, did you really mean what you said when you, when you said, hey, I'm committed to you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to live for you, Jesus. You know, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good and right thing. It's beautiful to be able to prove it. Yeah, that just as you're as you're talking, it made me think of um, the it's in the Gospels, right? It's the account of when Jesus talks about that in this world, you will have trouble, right? Like, take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, and also the the like cost of following Jesus, like the the analogy he he gives is the cross, which I think mm -hmm. in our 21st century minds is like, oh, that's a pretty thing that hangs in my church sanctuary, right? But but to his modern day hearers would have been an instrument of torture, an instrument of suffering, right? Um, yeah. And so when we think about what the Christian life is calling us into, it really is calling us into a life of suffering, which um, doesn't sound very fun most of the time. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I think most people would prefer it not to be that way most of the time. Yes. Um, so how have you, because I know that you have your own story of like struggling and, and, and your own like things that you've wrestled with in your marriage. And so how, how do you feel like you have walked out that, like that call to suffering for the cause of Christ in a sense in your, in your life? And how are, how are you and Alicia doing that in your marriage? Yeah. I mean, I can say I've done terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not, I mean, I, like, I, there's just been times where it's been harder. Like I've really struggled with depression. That's definitely part of my story. And um, some of it's just a physical problem. It's, you know, just the way that my brain 
you know, works yeah. or doesn't work and, and that's okay. You know, um, I've been on a journey with that and I'm in a really healthy place right now. And so I, I that's a, a thing to celebrate the Lord on, you know? Um, yeah. I don't know, man, like this, this life just ain't easy and it would be really great if we could experience just the wholeness and fullness of God and his goodness. Um, but we only get that in part. Like yeah. that, that, that's like the same way. I, I think none of us get sanctified in this, in this lifetime. I just think we can't experience full shalom in this lifetime. Mm. We get glimpses of it. We, um, we can feel it and enjoy that, but it's, it's sometimes really fleeting. Yeah. But like, um, walking that pathway to hope is like, is really hard. You know, Romans five, like we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and that character produces hope. And that hope does not put us to shame. Right. Yeah. Um, that that's a hard path to walk that I think there's other pathways that we can choose. Like maybe like suffering produces uh, bitterness and bitterness <laughs> produces doubt and doubt produces hopelessness. That's actually the path of least resistance. Yeah. But like, if we can recognize that, like that doesn't lead us to hope and, and that hope is like beyond like the here and now it's for the then and there, but it is for the here and now. Like, it's just, it's been a privilege, I guess, to, to try to answer your question. It's been a privilege to try to model that as yeah. faulty as I've been. And I, I just think like the, the church operates best when we like, when we model it, when we encourage it, when we like come beside someone and hold their arms up when they're weak and weary and, and, you know, like being battle tested is where it's at. And yeah, um, sadly for right or for wrong, marriage is where that gets played out. Um, mm. Haley, I, I feel like I gave you and Jalen this encouragement before, as you guys were getting married of like, Hey, Hey, listen, like marriage is going to be the best ministry of your life. Like you yeah. guys have good ministry already, but marriage is going to be the place where like people take notice, you know? Yeah, um, totally. Some, I'm sorry. I'm just off and running right now. So no, you go, me, but, no, but you go, I, you know how like the church is depicted as like the, the city on the hill, like, Oh, mm -hmm. look, you know, the, the city on the hill is like, it's beautiful. It's warm. And there's like, it's attractive. There's so much good stuff. I actually think in today's day and age, that the church has lost its ability to be the, the city on the hill yeah. for right or for wrong, you know, just whatever. I think it's marriage now. I think marriage yeah. is the city on the hill. It sits in the middle of, of the neighborhood and people see it. People see how, like, how sweet that love is and how real it is and how, like, you know, attractive. Like, I, I think marriage is, is the, the, like, last hope that we have for, I mean, don't get me wrong, love the church and the church is full of a lot of hope, but like <laughs> marriage is that, that place of ministry where it's like, Hey, something's different about you. And I don't get it. It's not like yeah. a Sunday thing. It's like an everyday thing, you know, sure. does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, no, I think that that's a really interesting as, uh, in the sense of that, the, the image that we see between Christ and his church is one of marriage, right? It's the bride and the bridegroom, um, and they are being connected together in marriage. And I think that there is this beautiful image that we get in marriage of being able to be like a kingdom outpost to the world around us, uh, especially in today's cultural climate where marriage is often seen as, I just watched a movie this last weekend, and it was this movie about these, this, this friend, these two friends who uh, like go to all these weddings in a summer together, they like decide that they're just going to be each other's plus ones to all of the weddings that they're attending in the summer. Okay. And they end up falling in love, you know, classic rom-com. Oh, but amazing. they, <laughs> but in the middle of the movie, the guy talks to his best friend who just got married and he's like, he just asks him about marriage. And the guy, the friend of the guy that's the main character in the movie says to him, well, marriage is really fun. And that's why you get married is because it's fun. And I was sitting there watching this movie as a Christian thinking, that's not why we get married. We don't get married for fun. And in totally. fact, if that's the reason you get married, 
your marriage is not going to withstand when the suffering comes, right? Oh my gosh, um, yes. And so it was just a really interesting thing to me to think about how Christian marriages, especially Christian marriages who have suffering in them, can be a beacon of hope to people when the hard times come. Because uh, mm. I think that we need to continue to be that city on a hill or a beacon of hope when mm-hmm. people start feeling like their lives are crumbling around them. Dude, preach it, Haley. Like, <laughs> yes, that's so good. I'm stealing all of that um, yes, for, for my coaching. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, okay, personally, and this is one of the coaching bits that I do pretty consistently is like, man, the best thing that we can do is learn to not take ourselves too seriously. Mm, mm-hmm. And uh, is there a better place in this entire universe to learn to not take yourself too seriously than marriage? Like. <laughs> Probably not. (laughs) No, no, there's not. I mean, everything else is calling us to take ourselves more seriously. Marriage is the place to not take ourselves too seriously. And like that, that place of humility, that place of, um, of service is so beautiful. Like, yeah, it's not about fun. Certainly you will have fun, but it, it, it is about something so much more and it's, it's deeply spiritual. Yeah, it is. And and that, yeah, to clarify, I don't mean that it's not fun. Marriage is totally fun and you should have fun in your marriage. But if fun is the bedrock of your marriage, that's yeah. going to fall apart real fast, right? Uh, totally. And so, Jim, you know, I think we've talked about a lot of things, um, but you, a couple of minutes ago, you just talked about hope and the importance mm-hmm. of hope being the foundation. And so I think there's a lot of hopeless marriages out there today. I think a lot totally. of people are very hopeless. Um, so. Can you give an encouragement to people who feel hopeless about what, like what, what can bring about hope when they feel absolutely hopeless? Cause I know you've been there. How, how can they start to, to live in a place of hope? I mean, do we have another half an hour for me to just roll <laughs> yeah, on this? Sorry. Cause that's a big question. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge question. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So I, I mean, this is like, why my coaching ministry exists is because Mm. people are struggling in that expectation gap and feeling at least the temptation to live hopeless. Um, Oh gosh, where do I even start? Like, I want to keep it pithy. Um, Here's the thing. We would all, I think as believers say like, Oh, you know, I, I, I love Jesus and I can't wait for heaven. Like I've got so much hope for heaven. And, um, you know, that's good. That's right. Like we, we should be anticipatory for heaven, but if like everything's just about the then and there of heaven and not mm. the here and now we are missing out. And I often think that there, there's a, a good percentage of Christians that are like, oh, I just love Jesus and can't wait for heaven. And oh my gosh. And then the moment suffering comes, they walk it back real hard. Like what the junk God, like I, <laughs> I was just telling people how in love with you that I am and how I can't wait to be with you. And then you let this happen to me. Like, Mm. no, man, like that's not right. You do that to those other people, not to me. And I think that's a travesty that makes us look incredibly hypocritical if nothing else. But like, I, I, I want to tell that person so badly, like, Hey, did you not get the memo? If you're so excited about heaven, if you've got all this hope for the then and there, the pathway to getting there is actually death or tribulation. Mm. There is no other way to heaven. It is death or tribulation. So we should probably get really comfortable with the fact that we're going to have to walk that path. That is our path of, of ultimate hope. And it's not, I just believe it's not about the then and there. I mean, it is, but... It is about bringing that hope into the here and now. And that's why I love my story. Like I call myself like a, a suffering guy. Yeah. And I, I, I love the opportunity to demonstrate that like hope can be real in the here and now. Like I, mm. I have so much gratitude for what is real in my life. I celebrate as profusely as I can. And I love serving people through my expectation gaps and, and modeling that is a privilege and an opportunity. And um, it, it's it's why I can come on podcasts like this and say, hey, I hate the suffering. Like, I mm. hate the story. I, we've scratched the surface. We, it would take hours yeah. for me to get through like right. any 
true representation of our story, but it's been hundreds of nights in the hospital, dozens of surgeries. My wife has essentially died on me twice. Like I've Mm. held her lifeless body in my arms twice. I hate all of that. Like, where do you find hope in that? Like, (laughs) there's, there's no hope seemingly. Right. But there is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Jim. Oh, that, that just like kind of gave me chills actually. Uh, I, yeah, I want to wrap up here, but as, as we do, what, what are you most hopeful for in you and Alicia's current season of your marriage? Hmm. It's simultaneously what I'm most hopeful for and what I'm least hopeful for. Mm-hmm. I just, I looked up at this picture of, of the three of us and um, my little boy Anderson is not so little. He's 13 now. Yeah. And um, I'm really hopeful for him that he would uh, take this message that he would take all this suffering and, and do really well with it. But I'm also really fearful that he's going to go the other direction, you know, like it's yeah. the, it is the um, the biggest burden that I have right now. It's like the thing I'm most concerned about. And um, I want to do a lot to control it mm-hmm. <laughs> and hold it very tightly and just like force him there. But I guess the hope comes from like, you know what? Jesus loves him more than I ever could. And he is actually yeah. in control. So I, it, it's, it's a, it's an opportunity to just trust him and say, all right, this little boy, he's actually yours. And Mm. I get to play a role and I'm thankful for that, but um, I'm going to live with anticipation that he's going to, um, that he's going to find this pathway to hope for himself. And so that's what I'm hopeful for. I'm scared to death of it, that he's not going to, but I'm hopeful for it. Wow. You know, Jim, we could literally talk for another 45 minutes about parenting through suffering, which we probably should have touched on. But, you know, that's for another podcast. That's another time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's do it. But, uh, Jim, you know, as uh, thank you for taking the time to to talk with me today. I'm always so encouraged by you. uh, And I know that there are so many others who are encouraged by you. Um, If anybody's looking to get connected to you or to Tiller, um, where can they find you? Where's the best place for them to, to look for you? Yeah, I would say um, tillercoaching.org is the ministry website. The sufferingguy.com is the book website. It's, you know, um, it's, it's a place to go to see pictures and to understand the magic of us and, and what, what the dynamicness of that story is. Um, you know, I've, I've got this new book, uh, coming out. It's a Bible study book called made alive. I just wanted to, uh, piggyback off this great podcast. So I just, <laughs> I, I had a lot of forethought, um, and that comes out in a few weeks. And so, uh, you know, either of those places would be a good place to, to find that. So, um, awesome. Yeah. How about cool. that? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Jim, for being on here. We really appreciate you. And we're really grateful for your continued friendship with this house. And, um, obviously we continue to pray for you and Alicia because, um, and Anderson, cause we know that this, this isn't going away anytime soon and it's just a continuation. And so we are praying for you guys and we love you guys. Haley, I really appreciate that. I just got to tell you, I,